Well, hello there and welcome and a good afternoon to you. My name is Fiona Mbabazi uh, from Rwanda Television. And of course, on the sidelines of the ongoing Youth Connect, we will be talking to some of the brilliant young uh, youth from our very own continent. And they'll be telling us uh, changing of mindsets and social barriers. How do we break it? How do we move far from it? And how do we endeavor to see that our continent is prosperous and it is growing and it is inclusive for everyone, not, of course, leaving behind the youth who we know are a very big component of this. So I'll start by letting them introduce themselves. I'll start with you, Salem. Please introduce yourself as we go this way. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Salam Taka. I come from Ethiopia. I'm an African Union Youth Volunteer. Um, currently, I'm working with the United Nations World Food Program. Thank you. Brian? <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Brian Mafuso from Zimbabwe. Currently, I'm uh, working with the African Union uh, Youth Volunteer Program. And um, back home in Zimbabwe, I work with the Young People's Network on Sexual Reproductive Health, HIV and AIDS, supported by UNFP. Yeah, it's important. al <laughs> Harith. Hello, uh, my name is Al Harith Al Shubani. I come from uh, Libya, which is in the north of Africa, next to Egypt. Uh, in terms of my uh, career, I do two jobs. The first one is a full-time job as a foreign relations officer. And also the second job is an English teacher, part-time. Uh, I've been uh, selected as uh, an African Union volunteer uh, for the ninth patch, which is going to be hopefully deployed next year. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Lou Ayadwabu. I come from Côte d'Ivoire. I'm on AUYVC, which stands for African Union Youth Volunteer Corps. As for my background, I just graduated my master's from France as a lawyer linguist. So my major is legal translation. Oh, yeah. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, my name is Selemani Kitenge. I'm coming from Tanzania, and I'm also part of the African Union Youth Volunteer Program. But um, back home, I work as uh, an, an administrator and spokesperson to the Honorary Consulate of Sierra Leone. But before that, I was also working as a program officer on a project uh, that target to accelerate um, youth participation in decision-making bodies uh, across the country. So um, I also uh, consult youth organizations on different uh, initiatives. And currently, I'm also one young world peace ambassador. Thank you very much, everyone. So we start off our discussion, of course, we'll start off with the changing of mindsets. We know that many people, when they think of Africa, even Africans ourselves, we feel like Africa is a continent of poverty. It's a continent of diseases. So I'll start off with you, Salem, because you're from Ethiopia. When we look at Ethiopia, we look at beautiful people. We look at the beautiful culture and heritage. But I'm sure there's so much more than what we see or what we can imagine. In your opinion, what do you think are some of the key things that should change in the mindsets of an African before they even decide to move from one you know, country to another? Um, thank you. I think we're always in a society where they think like everybody needs to go to school, educate, and then find jobs. Coming to this uh, summit, one thing I learned is, like, as you said, in Africa we have a lot of problems, like we talk about our poverty, but we need to see that also as an opportunity. Because if you go to like the developed countries, they did everything. It will be very difficult to be an entrepreneur in developed countries. But when you come to Africa, there are a lot of things that you can do to develop your country. Um, so I'm thinking like instead of trying to be, trying to find jobs, we need to be like job creators. Yeah. That's what I believe. Brian, according to you, what's, what's, what, what, what do you think needs to change, especially in the mindset? When I look at Zimbabwe from my side, I haven't been to Zimbabwe, but I look at it as, say, uh, I wouldn't want to be biased, but of course you understand where I come from, but yet I'm African. I need to have that ch change of my own mindset. How do we change this? How do you sell your country to ensure that it is not the country that I imagine in my small head? Okay, uh, thank you so much. First of all, um, I would like to say that, yes, of course, um, there has been challenges around the image of certain countries uh, caused by, um, should I say, political um, situations around. And to tell the truth, sometimes um, it affects young people because everywhere you go, 
um, you are perceived in in the certain way of like your country or your leader. I remember um, some point in time where I used to travel, right? And when I used to go like buy something, maybe at the airport and whatever, a person would ask me, where, where are you from? Then I'll be like, I'm from Zimbabwe. So you'll be putting up the trolley. Then, they, then they'll be like, ah, you are Mugabe. You know, that kind of thing. But what it actually taught me is we have a very, very important role in image management. And I think sometimes I go to the idea of Pan-Africanism. Some of the challenges that happen in the countries in, in terms of social and economic problems are caused really by that um, lack of Pan-Africanism in some challenges because we see through the integration processes that when Zimbabwe is, in cha when Zimbabwe is having problems, um, be it in social, economic, uh, political aspects, there is need for countries to quickly um, react to, to the situation, not just only for the women or youth, but for the country as a whole, because remember, we're working on that principle that you are my brother, you are my sister. And for me, I think mindset shift would be addressing those areas of having nationalism, right? The nationalism goes to pan-Africanism. Here in Rwanda, you have something called uh, Umganda, right? And the reason why people go and clean and are able to do things as one is because they are united. So I believe that we need unity for us to tackle our social, economic problems as a whole and change our mindset towards that. Brian, it should start with you. What is your role personally as Brian to change this mindset? You know, you, as the African youth right now, of course, you're a volunteer and you will be going to other countries. As your role, what role will you play to ensure that this mindset change starts with that particular brother or sister you just mentioned, the Ubuntu we're talking about. Okay, uh, so like a few, 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 few days ago, we had like a speaker that was coming and talking about Pan-Africanism, and he was um, talking about intermarriages, that kind of thing. I'm not saying it's, 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 it's a suggestion, but I think what it signifies is people should not be marginalized along terms of saying that because you are from Rwanda, you cannot do this. So my role personally in contributing to that, I think would be having that first feel of Pan-Africanism and personally contributing to, 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 to health in my field that I'm, I'm very good at. So contributing to, to the health policy documents, uh, implementation, monitoring and evaluation. So I think if every young person can actually be good at what they do and volunteer their services, like what the AU does, like it gives us a platform to volunteer our services. He's good in policy, she's good in economics, he's good in, 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 in English and other things. So you find out that this is the spirit that we have to have, the spirit of volunteerism, helping out and helping each other out as Africans. al -Harith. Um, he's talked about, of course, Pan-Africanism. She's talked the importance of going deep, you know, into our own sense as Africans. Ignorance, is that a key to the hindrance of why we Africans don't know much about Africa? Because if I don't cross my borders, I do not care what's happening in the next country, you know. Is ignorance a key and how do we fight it? To be honest... Uh me personally, I've been able to actually live within two cultures. So throughout my education, I've studied in the UK and I've lived there for a bit of time. But again, I, I had the, my heart and my ambition, my passion was towards Africa, towards my uh, uh, country. So after I finished, I just literally came here and uh, I've decided to work on what I have and try to make an impact within my community. And uh, I've discovered many things, hardships, throughout my journey and uh, throughout, and I'm continuously working through these hardships and challenges. And one of the things is ignorance. People, uh, majority of youths are following the trend where they're saying, oh, we don't have opportunity and we are considered to be like in a different level from others and always look at other countries or other sides of the continent uh, and the globe 
as they are better than us and the more skill uh, there's more skills and the more educated but yet again I, I look at it from a positive perspective we work harder and because there's a lot of hardships and challenges in our uh, country I feel like I'm developing much faster than anyone else around me and you just need to change your mindset to towards thinking that these hardships and challenges will be an opportunity not something which actually hinders you and make you like like down so I guess my advice is to all those young young generation young people is try to work towards your hardships and challenges look at them from an opportunity perspective and even even when you have this mentality the thing is when you think positively you be able to th to share your ideas and try to solve the, these issues and hardships with other youths as well which is i found great and uh, exciting sometimes but on Harith, uh, you come from Libya, and um, of course, when we talk about Africa, Libya is part of Africa. We have North Africa, we have East Africa, South Africa, you know, and all those clusters. But when you look at Africans, we have a way of which, uh, should I say, a cluster, say, from North Africa feels they're better off. Yeah? I'm seeing lots of you shaking your heads. So, <laughs> you know, they feel like you're better off than the African from the East. I mean, how do we break this? Because it will start with you, obviously. But how will you play your role to ensure that you're breaking this? Something that just happened plastic? to me today. I've met some uh, one friend from Kigali, and he texts me in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. He's telling me, like, I want to go back to Libya. Can you take me there? And I'm thinking to myself, like. You have a great country, like, um, we just need to think about creating, like, a connection together. I guess, it's, again, it's perspective and also knowledge. You need to be able to understand what does each country offer. And, um, yes, in the north, we maybe have different resources from other uh, uh, countries within Africa. But, again, if you look at every single Africa, they have a specific thing. They have something that no country has and they just need to work towards developing this and also try to uh, share it and also save it at the same time. And looking after your resources is something is beneficial for you as a, as, a, as a country and also as a generation. And I guess in terms of the, the, the perspective between North and, and East and West and, and Central and South, I think is one of the things is social media. Uh, the media itself, the way that things are perceived within the news. Um, I guess the people that I speak to who have traveled through the continent and have actually uh, managed to live within a specific area around the continent, they have a different perspective. Me personally, it's my first time I traveled to the south. And first of all, I'm very excited. Secondly, I've, I've developed myself uh, like in terms of mindset. It's shifted completely. Um, I've I was thinking, yes, I'm going to come to the south. Maybe I'm going to be expecting um, to have some problems. But then again, I, when it came here, it just every day there's a surprise after surprise after surprise. So I'm, I'm very excited to share th this and also to go back to Libya and uh, actually have this uh, pan-Africanism uh, mentality towards working together as a continent. If other continents can do it, why not us? They're not better than us. And we just need to understand each one of us, and then we'll be able to actually communicate. Well, we're glad you're learning the positive side of the other side of Africa, Harith. There you go. <laughs> Lou, I, uh, yes. you know, he mentioned a very important tool, social media. And we have seen how social media has played a very big role, uh, especially in the northern um, side of Africa. So in your opinion, how can social media be played? How can, how can we use social media as the youth to tell our own stories? Because I think it is very important that we as the youth use our own Facebook, Twitter, you know, to tell our own stories. I'm in Kigali. This is Kigali. This is beautiful. I come to Cote d'Ivoire. I want to tell you a story. How do we use social media for the benefit of Africa? Okay, thank you for this question. Uh, we can say that today social media is a revolution of information sharing because nowadays everybody has the opportunity to be an actor when it comes to share information. Now we do not only rely on what is imposed on us when it comes to media, we can also create 
our own content when it comes to information. So I think we have to be embedded in a kind of African conscious, African consciousness. I mean, when you are fooled by such will to put Africa on the map, and when you have now the tools to do so, to achieve such objective, thanks to social media that we can master, I think we can put the both of us, we can, we can mingle such tools for us to give a new image to Africa. Now, if I see uh, something said about Africa, which is false, for example, Africa is a, co a country of poor people dying of hunger, I can snap pictures, I can uh, video some positive initiatives or actions that are implemented in my continent and put it on social media to change the narrative. So now we have the power, the tools to change it. It's our responsibility now. It is everyone's responsibility. Mm -hmm. Apart from social media, I'll come talk to you, Selemani, but I'm sure will you guys all agree with me that language is also part and parcel of our drive towards the growth of Africa. Yes. I say this because uh, just recently South Africa wanted, uh, was trying to adapt Kiswahili yes. uh, into uh, one of the language that everyone should speak because apparently this will make it easier for everyone to talk in Africa, you know. Selemani, Tanzania is one of the countries, of course, that is heading in comes Kiswahili. Yes, Apo, you know, yes. there's no discussion when it comes to it. Kabisa. But you agree with that, that language plays an important role. Mm. And, you know, in my opinion, when you talk about changing of mindsets, I wonder why do we make... Why do we spend so much time trying to learn foreign languages? Why don't we try to learn, you know, our old, say Amharic? Why don't I try to learn Arabic? Why, do I tr why don't I try to learn Kiswahili, for example? Why is it so hard for Africans to, you know, use our own solutions in the continent? Uh, actually, that is a very interesting uh, question. Um, in my opinion, I would say, look at the Chinese. Those guys have developed, but... Do they speak English? Most of them don't. They speak Chinese. Um, look at Russians. Uh, do they speak proper English? No, they don't. They speak their own language, but still they have been able to develop and move uh, away from where they were before to a more proper stage. Um, I'm saying this because um, I, in the past I had the opportunity um, to go to, to Russia and with that experience I was able to see different kind of innovations from young people from the program that I, I, I went to. I, I also had the opportunity to see how young people can be vibrant and share their own opinion on different matters freely without being, you know, without fearing anything. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion I would say uh, language is a very important tool. Um, as far as the matter of development is concerned. Mm. For instance, in schools, mm. we are using English to, to teach our children um, on different issues like biology, chemistry, and other, all other subjects. Mm. But sometimes, when it comes to exams, uh, those ch children have to take time to cram everything inst instead of understanding the context mm. uh, of which they're supposed to uh, to, 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 to study. So, on that note, mm. I still insist that uh, language is a very important uh, uh, key uh, to, towards development. Alharith, you don't look convinced. Language is not part of this growing social The thing is, we need to look at it from a global perspective. If we look at English, 80% of the businesses around the world use English. And um, in terms of our opportunity, again, it's a perspective. Yes. If companies understand that there's an opportunity within Africa and a language is needed to be able to actually communicate between them. I guess it's something that uh, governments can push. Mm. I okay. to differ. Let's, let's first listen to Brad before okay. we go to Okay, him. so like, I, I think the idea that we are talking about is an idea of having our own language as Africans, right? And 
one of the things that I would like to say is that we should always be mindful of, uh, should I say, imperialism or neocolonialism forces yes. that want to instill certain ideas in us that, you know, it's cool to speak in English, it's cool to speak in French, right? Because, like, for example, in my country where I come from, people are so, so uh, proud of speaking English, right? And they don't just speak like normal English, they hype it up, they have in that accent, and you could have like <laughs> girls going to the airport and when they come back from there, they have an, an accent, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. And it goes again to the mindset. Do you really think that having that fancy accent makes you better than the next person? Because this is the question that I'm always asking. And if you look at the idea of um, Swahili in South Africa, if I'm not mistaken, last time I actually saw it, it was being proposed by um, one very young politician called uh, Julius Malema, right? And if you look at the perspective that Julius Malema is portrayed in South Africa, they portray him as, I don't no offense, but they portray him as, as someone that's dumb, someone that's always saying something that is crazy. So whenever he says, let's introduce Swahili, we all Africans are like, ah, Swahili for what? You know, that kind of thing. But does he make a point when he says, let's introduce Swahili? Let's have a common language that he makes, we can all understand one another. He makes a very, very valid point because at the end of the day, you see language is a thing that communicates a lot of things. There have been wars around languages because people wanted to speak, to speak their languages. Mm. We are Africans and if we have, like even starting from now, since we are talking about mindset change, if our leaders can all agree on one thing, let's, that, let's just learn Swahili. It's simple. Let's learn Swahili. I'll say whatever I say, I want to say to her, and he, she says whatever she wants to say. And even when we're talking about intermarriages, it can happen. It can happen. Sally, you. what's your opinion? Can I, can I, can I? <laughs> let, 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 let's first okay. hear from her. I agree with all of them. Let me try to mention a point about Al Haris. He said like 80% of the people in the world speak English. That's why we learn English. For example, when you come to the United Excuse Nations, me, it says UN company. official language and um, Arabic, English, French, Spanish. So you don't want to learn Swahili because you want to develop your career tomorrow. So what do I do? Like what I'm doing now, you learn French. Because next time when you apply, like I learn French, it will be extra point. But my point is, it's not the Bible. If we actually make like Swahili Africa's official language, who knows, tomorrow they will make it the UN's official language, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is like, try, to, try to, to, to teach people one official language, and then the whole Africa will learn Swahili, and then it will be official language in one of the big organizations. Absolutely. Before, okay, just talk about it, then we jump into volunteerism and the importance oh, of it, even I as... I wanted to add go. something. Okay. If, let's, let's listen, then you oh, can oh, Okay. Uh, I totally second my colleague here. We need English nowadays for business. You know, this is the reality, we can't do away with it. But at the same time, it doesn't prevent us to learn a common African language. For instance, I speak three foreign languages. One doesn't uh, prevent me to do the other. So why not learn in Swahili, you know? Another thing is that a language, as a linguist, I know that the language translates or conveys an idea, an ideology, a spirituality even. So sometimes when we adopt that language, we don't know, but we are still conveying that spirituality, that culture, that ideology. Sometimes this, that is not ours. I'll take an example. When you mention God, God is, refers, he ref, he is referred to as a man. We always say he. Mm -hmm. But in the Ghana language of Ghana, for instance, God is not a he. Is a man, a woman, and their creator. That's how he is mentioned, or they are mentioned. I don't know how to say it. You understand? English, in English, I'm obliged to say he. But in the Ghana language, I can't say he. It's ata na nyumo. It means man, woman, and their creation. So it changes the mindset when you adopt a language. That's, that's why it's really important for us to learn the English, yes, because we need it but also to know our own language, which is linked to our spirituality so that, or to our culture so that we can better embrace it. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, um, let me conquer with what uh, Louis just said. Um, again, uh, do not quote me long, <laughs> but what I'm saying is um, there is nothing long, I mean, to learn other languages like English, uh, French, uh, uh, German, as to name a few, but again, we have to have something of our own. 
something that we say, this one is ours. And on that note, I would definitely say without hesitation that Swahili is our own language. Yes. Do you think we need a radical change of mind for all the youth out there? You know, uh, is it time that we took up the mantle ourselves and said, yes, I'm representing my country. This is it. This is Africa. I die for Africa. I live for Africa. I breathe Africa. How do we instill that in our youth? We see so many people dying in the Mediterranean Sea. We see so many hopeless, you know, young people who feel hopeless, which they shouldn't be feeling because this is Africa. If only we could embrace it. Harit, I see you want to say something. <laughs> uh, to be honest, uh, I was, uh, for me, I, I tried my best to constantly evaluate, first of all, uh, the environment I'm within and also try to look forward to creating an impact, uh, especially within the community I am. It doesn't necessarily have to be Libya. Wherever I am, I try to make an impact, positive in impact. I want to look at what's going on with Africa and perspective and like an optimistic and there are the young uh, generation is doing a great job we're learning we're developing and we're creating a change and we're working on it like I, I was very surprised because the more that I know about youth uh, especially like going to the south now and uh, meeting many many uh, of my uh, I call them my friends now they, they share the same idea where they want Africa to be great. They want to create uh, an impact. Mm. They want to change something. And they have the passion behind it. It uh, doesn't matter if he's working in a coffee shop or it doesn't matter if he's working um, as a uh, shop assistant. But he has a vision within maybe seven years, eight years. And he's gonna be working on that to actually make an impact within the community, which creates an impact overall in Africa. My director tells me we're running out of time, so I'll let you guys give me your takeaway points. And if you know the youth listening to us right now, what should they, what do they need to do to have a positive change of mindset? Because if I believe, for me, when you ask me what is Africa, I say Africa is the future, mm. whether we like it or not. But that's just me. Mm. What's your opinion of Africa? What is your Africa? Um, me, especially after coming to the Africa Union Youth Corps, one thing I learned is we need to unite. Like, I don't know if you guys know right now in my country, people are fighting, killing each other, and like all these things because of history happened like 137 years ago. Mm -hmm. Because one king killed one tribe, that tribe killed another tribe. Mm -hmm. But one thing we can take example of Rwanda, for example, is like after the 1994 genocide, all that happened. Mm -hmm. Yes, it happened. We keep it as a history, we learn from our mistakes, we unite together. Because to think about our history, like we were colonized, yes, this, this, this happened, yes. But what do we do? We learn the best out of it. And then we unite, we come together. And then we try to develop Africa together. So I believe in uniting. Right. Okay. So, so for me, uh, one thing that I would like encourage young people is like when you are down, there's no place to go but up. That's the only option that's there. And I think we go back even like to the, to the, to the dream of the AU, the Agenda 2063, the Africa that we want. The Africa that we want is an Africa that is prosperous, that you can look at and you can be like, wow, this is a cool continent. But how that happens is we have to have a mindset of um, seeing in the future and personally contributing through the role that we can play. If you can volunteer, volunteer. If you can start an organization, start an organization that helps in HIV and AIDS and, and in health. If you are an entrepreneur, don't always complain about um, jobs and everything. Try to start something that can actually help the next young person and you can employ and you can be on platforms where you can say, I helped 3,000 young people be the solution. Don't always complain. There are a lot of challenges that we have. And also, one thing that I would also actually appeal to some of our um, young people in the, is that when we talk to our leaders and our politicians, it's not all just about politicking. Also, Try to find a way, a respectful way of actually engaging them so that you can actually uh, shift also their mindsets to actually say, because there are some wars that will take time to actually win. So, yeah, I think there's need for that, us to volunteer, do our work, be good at what you do, and be contribute the change to Africa. You want be to the change you want to Harith, be. Yeah. you take away. Me personally, I, I think one of the most important things as an, uh, a young uh, entrepreneur, young student, uh, um, is, is the ability to to 
network to have uh, a group of people that are able to actually lift you up. So when you're by yourself, it's much, much harder to, to develop and actually learn when you have a, a group who shares the same ideology, same mindset, they want to push uh, Africa to a greater extent and a better position. You feel energy, uh, honor, excitement, uh, passion, ambition, and also the, the, the fear of actually unknown. You're trying to push towards something which uh, hopefully is not going to be a problem and it's not going to be hardships. Yes, it's going to be hardships throughout, but when we reach to that position, we're going to look back and say, you know what, we did a great job. And all of this is because of the group that we had. And I'm very honored and uh, within the two weeks I've been here, uh, as in my pre-deployment, I've managed to meet uh, very passionate people and uh, very respected people as well. And I can see within, within their mindset and heart that Africa will be better. And we need, to, we need to change and we need to work on it now. And hopefully that's what we're gonna be doing. Thank you. Lou? Yeah, thank you. I think everything has to t start from a tender age. From a tender age, we should let the children or the child discover his God's, or their God-given talent. And that God-given talent um, puts it at the service of the continent. So build in it or grow in it uh, in a child like that, this need to put their talent, to put uh, their God-given skills at the service of Africa and grow like that. By all means, there will be uh, prosperous young people who always have in their mindset Africa's prosperity, Africa's well-being. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Um, on, my, on, on my hand, I would like to say that um, in, in psychology and sociology, there is a saying that says um, children are born uh, with innate purity, but the society or the environment uh, around them change them. So as for me, um, changing mindset is a matter of who you associate yourself with. So if you want to be better, I mean, you have to find friends whom you share common interests with. Um, in, in school, they've uh, used clubs, join them. In universities, they've clubs, join them. I mean, in, there are so many youth lead organizations that one can take part and learn a lot from. from. I mean, taking an example of myself, um, I started volunteering when I was uh, in standard six primary school. And since then, I've been engaging in different youth initiatives. And there was a time when I even got dumped, you know. <laughs> because when you volunteer a lot, you, you, you know, you don't have money and your girl can't stay. So, <laughs> so I, I didn't give up, I moved on, I moved on, but now I would say that if they call people who have been in different parts of the world, I'll, come, I'll stand up, and sometimes you have to sacrifice something to get something, and that is what my parents did. They actually sold their piece of land to enable me to go on my first trip to Russia, which made me a very vibrant young man that yes. I am today. Yes. Well, thank you very much. I think as we close, we we'll all agree that Africa is the future. Yes, yes, indeed. We're staying and working for Africa. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Keep thank watching you. Rwanda Television, and thank you. And, of course, let's keep the conversation going on social media and everywhere. Let's ensure that we are talking Africa and, of course, instilling ourselves that, indeed, Africa mm. is the future. My name is Fiona Mbabazi. Keep enjoying Rwanda Television.